Hello, my name is Robert Hollis. I want to thank you very much for getting on my Periscope. I really, really appreciate each and every one of you taking your very variable time, valuable time, and getting on here and supporting me. Uh, today, I'm positive that we'll go over a million hearts, and I really, really, really appreciate that. Three, I think, close to 3,000 uh, people that are following, so really, really cool. If I can do it, you can do it. So the title today is, I used to be an auto mechanic and uh, was broke in every way that you can imagine until I got introduced to somebody that ended up being my mentor. I have, he's now a billionaire. Uh, Roger Penske was also a billionaire. So I had two billion dollar mentors, but on top of that, I've always seeked out and looked for and found other mentors. So today I'm a lifemechanic.com. What is a life mechanic? A life mechanic is going to do everything in his power to fix what is currently going on that you want fixed. You got to want it to be fixed, right? So I love giving people tune-ups from the neck up. <laughs> So my whole goal is to take everything that I've learned, hello Mer Melody Riva, and, and share it with you. So today is a whole topic about disruptive business models. Now here's something I want each and every one of you to really think about when I first got involved in, in marketing. My mentor, which was Bill Gould, believe it or not, when he first started out the presentation, listen please, listen closely. When he first started out the presentation, he talked about his influence from his mentors that taught him, Larry Huff and Larry Thompson, that also, you know, Jim Rowan. And the reason that is so important when you're talking to somebody to say that you're learning from somebody is that if you don't, they're going to think you're the answer person. They're going to think you're the person that knows all the information. And that's where all the objections, all the questions, everything come from. When you can promote and edify somebody else, then you can say that you got your knowledge to be successful from someone other than you. Someone other than you. Now, why is this important? My mentor could have told me how much money he made. My mentor could have told me all of this stuff. No, he stood in front of the room and talked about a book. I never even thought about it. I always got it right here. He talked about a book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And instead of going through the whole book, he said, listen, there was some concepts in here. Some concepts in here called uh, OPI, OPE, OPM. And he started talking about residual income. He started talking about how middlemen get cut out. You know what I mean? So instead of going from the manufacturer all the way to the retailer, you know, to the customer, that companies like Walmart disrupted that business model. And then Costco disrupted that business model. And now Amazon is disrupted, all of them, including Alibaba. You know what I mean? So if you guys haven't heard of Alibaba, Alibaba, you know, out of China, which is like Amazon, they did, listen closely, they did $1 billion in eight minutes, $14 billion in one day. Did you guys hear that? So one of the uniqueness about disruptive business models is that when something happens, it not only is like a trend. So my mentor said to me, Robert, you don't have to be smart. You don't have to be good looking. You don't have to speak well. If you get in front of a trend, it's like a freight train moving 80 miles an hour west. Get in front of the trend. Learn from people that capitalize on trends. And so to me, it was really easy. A lot of people, you know, when they hear about my marketing background and they hear that I've been in 17 different companies, they look at that as bad. Why? Because of the environment that they grew up, the culture that they grew up. See, it's okay to have multiple jobs to increase your income or increase, uh, maybe uh, get to a better location or work around people that will actually, you know, give you praise and recognition and you can actually feel better working there. See, it's okay to change a job. It's okay to change spouses. <laughs> It's okay to change locations, you know what I mean, to where you live, but it's not okay to change companies. Ooh, taboo. 
all my trend, all my companies that I've gone from, from company to company to company was based on this trend, this disruptive model. Now, I'm just going to cover some really unique things here because I think that you guys will get it right away. Um, but if you look at telecom alone, see, I made millions, not saying it, I made millions of dollars by selling long distance. Long distance used to be 25 cents a minute. There was two big companies, you know, Excel Telecommunications and ACN, right? Uh, and it was amazing that, you know, we there, that AT&T, MCI and Sprint, that model got disrupted. It got, you know, AT&T got found guilty, guilty for having a monopoly. And so all of a sudden, MCI and Sprint came in, which are billion dollar companies. And then all of a sudden you got companies that stepped in there and they were selling it at 25 cents a minute. So you guys probably don't real. I'm 53, but it used to cost money to call from one state to another. If you were, un if you were unfortunate at the time with telecommunications and lived in California, you got charged 25 cents a minute to call area code to area code. <laughs> yeah, I well, I had long distance phone bills that when I was talking on phones that actually had cords to them, you know what I mean, were $2,000, $3,000 for an in-state telephone bill. Not long distance, just calling in the state of California. And Hawaii had what was called inter-island rates. My point, without getting off track, is that... You can make a lot of money when you're selling 25 cents long distance for 19 cents a minute. But overnight, it got interrupted. It got disturbed. See what I mean? It got disrupted. And all of a sudden, long distance rate went from 25 cents to 10 cents to 5 cents to free with cereal. <laughs> and what disrupted that? Uh, voice over internet protocol. I find it crazy, and I think that you, I'm streaming live all over the world every day through Periscope. I, I, you know, Floyd Mayweather, you know, a boxer, was fighting Manny Pacquiao, and they estimated he missed $10 million from this one free app called Periscope. Now, guess what? You can stand around all day and go, I think it's stupid. I I'm not doing it. I don't want to do it. It doesn't stop people from making tens of thousands and millions of dollars and billions of dollars from these changes. So all of a sudden, voice over internet protocol, all of a sudden you got bondage. If you guys remember, doo -doo, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. and then you got Skype. Now you got, you know, uh, apps. Some of you probably know more about this than me, but I remember when I was doing all the business in South America, everyone was using Voxer. Uh, there's another app called WhatsApp. You know, WhatsApp. And so you got these phone services where let me think about it. I, I got to really think. Do I want to pay money or do I want it for free? Um, wow. You know, can I, you know, can you, can I pray about this? Can I pray about this? I need to go home and really pray. And, and if you think I'm making fun of you, I am. It's like, come on. You know what I mean? So all of a sudden there's ways to communicate with people for free. I still got people that, that, that fight me not only on Periscope, but they fight me on Google Hangouts. I've never done a Google Hangout. I don't know if I want to do a Google Hangout. You know, I'm saying it's really frustrating and, and, and it's hard and, it, and it's difficult. Well, what, to click on a link and figure out how to get your computer to be able to do a live face-to-face? -face? See, Periscope, you're just seeing me and you're making, you know, chats. You know what I mean? You get to see me on the replay. Google Hangout, you get to hook up for free. Any one of you want to learn from me on a six-day-a-week basis? You go to lifemechanic.com. You put in your email address. And I'll continue to give you information on training, but you also can click on Ask Me Anything. And six days a week, I'm answering questions about anything that you want. 
I don't care what it's about. You know what I mean? My goal is to serve the public, right? So, you know, so Google Hangout is an awesome thing. YouTube is an awesome thing. Now, you guys might know of other softwares and things that are better. And guess what? I'm always trying to keep up. Lisa Grossman was trying to get me to do Google Hangouts probably a year before I did them. So you know what? I understand slow to change. But the whole concept of this is disruptive business models. So let me share something else that's very, very interesting. Do you think that music's changed? <laughs> you know, Spotify, you know, download, all this stuff, you know. Now when all of a sudden Adele comes out with her new album, 25, she breaks records for digital downloads, not people going to Walmart and picking up her CD. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, do you think that it's disrupted forever? Yeah. Do you think that radio was disrupted with digital satellite radio? Yes. Um, how about books? Do you think books have changed? You know what I mean? Do you think Kindle changed the world? iBooks now? Uh, PDF? Fast internet speed? Do you think that's changed? Do you see some of you? Now, guess what? I got people. C correct. Audible. You know, do you guys really, really think? Now, here's the funny thing about trends. Watch this. Is everybody still fights it? It's cr you know, I saw, hey, you know what? You ought to check out my book. It's on Amazon. How is that working? Um... Yeah, and I also got the uh, audio portion of the book and how I got it to be a best-selling book. How I got it to be a best-selling book, and you can go to lifemechanic.com, click on book. I'll give you all the information of how I took it number one in Amazon, okay? You know, so so go there. And it's like, what? You know, well, can I get a physical copy? Yes, you can. <laughs> you can go to Amazon, click on it, and bingo, you can get it, right? So... You know, books have changed. Would you agree? Publishing a book has changed. Man, I wrote my book, put it in the right format, digitally uploaded it to Create Space, had it in a Kindle version, was selling stuff in one day. You know, things are changing. Wouldn't you agree? Um, how about movies? Did you ever think that Netflix would be doing full-out movies? And then they change everything. There's a thing now called purge watching <laughs> where you can go on and write, watch Breaking Bad or House of Cards and these movies are not only good but guess what their actors in the movies are also getting Academy Awards now and and getting um a uh, uh, global you know getting golden globes people don't even know how to deal with it anymore so now you got hulu and and guess what I, apple tv is trying to put something together but you know for whatever reason they had a little problem getting some contracts signed with some people but they'll get it turned around they they will and so how many people think it's not going to be long before i don't know why we call them cable companies because soon they were just going to be called internet providers. <laughs> but guess who's trying to do stuff right now? All of them right now are trying to get free Wi-Fi. There's places in the world, ladies and gentlemen, I got, you know, I live out in the middle of nowhere. I got 60 megabits per second. Woo. You know, maybe three to five megabits up speed. There's places right now in the world that have free Wi-Fi that are gigabytes per second gigabytes per second, up and down, and it's free. So it might take a while for the United States to get it because our government likes to listen in and, and record everything that everyone's doing. But, you know, other countries are doing it, and it's going to happen. It's going to move there. Once the higher speed comes, guess where we're going now? You know, so um, I talked about this banking, you know, with Bitcoin. You know what I mean? My son was telling me, uh, Robert Hall, I mean, uh, Matthew was telling me that some kid years ago, like in 1995, was one of the first original investors in Bitcoin. And my son, Matthew, if you're on here, you can type in there exactly how much he put in, forgot about it, and then come back and what it's worth today. I mean, digital banking, again, 
The governments are trying to do everything they can do to stop. I can remember one time if a person wants to gamble, I, I don't. But if a person wanted to gamble, you had to go to a casino. Uh, you don't have to anymore. You can gamble online. All right. Now think about digital storage. You know what I mean? I still got some boat anchors around here someplace. Or maybe what I could do is use them now to, for paperweights. <laughs> But I used to have these things called hard drives that actually spun with a needle on them so I could store all my data. And then it went from there to now flash drives. You know, so my first hard drive that I had my first computer, this thing right here is now about, I don't know, probably 10, 20 times bigger than my first computer. My first computer didn't even have a megabyte of space. You know what I mean? My first Pentel, ding, 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 ding. You know what I mean? And so, you know, now, now it's going to solid state. Now it's going to iCloud. You're correct. I see somebody put it up there. It's like now, wow, it's now all digital. It's all in the cloud someplace, right? Um, um, how has traveling changed? How has traveling changed? You know what I mean? Not only, you know, Expedia, but Airbnb, Uber, you know, these are all apps. But how many people remember looking at a paper map? <laughs> when is the last time that people said, well, I don't know where this is? And you went, well, listen, why don't we pull out our paper map and we'll unfold it? You know what I mean? And we'll figure out where we are. You know, in California, because it was so big, they had a thing called a Thomas Guide. You know what I mean? And you could go to, oh, I got to look up the city. You know, that's A13 on on page. <laughs> and right, that is so funny. And you can't ever fold it back the right way. <laughs> All right. So now we got GPS on phones and it continues to get better. Now, when you put in an address, you not only could do it for your car or your airplane, but you also can do it for walking. So now it sort of zeroes in so you can walk up and go, yeah, I guess it's across the street. I mean, can you imagine all this stuff is changing? And here's why I did another Periscope a long time ago on change. But again, I just want you guys to sort of think about this. Maybe you could send this to somebody um, that is like fighting change, right? They're just flat out fighting change. I never, ever, ever dreamed that Amazon would go by Walmart. I didn't. See, you know, there was a time where people go, well, you know what? You can order it and save money online and UPS and Federal Express and, and you, you know, the Postal Service will just bring it to you. Now, nah, I'm, I, I, I'm going to go down to Walmart. You know what I mean? Now people are like, I don't want to go to Walmart. <laughs> I talked about Uber as far as replacing taxis. Do you know what the newest thing is, is with Uber? Now they're putting together apps where you can go order food and then have an Uber driver go pick up the food and deliver it to your home. So now all our favorite foods to eat, you can have an Uber driver go shop for you. Are you guys hearing this? Hey, here's my grocery list. Can you go pick up my grocery list? And deliver it to my home. Now, I know some of you are going, wow, you know, people are getting lazy. Uh, are they? Are they? Do you really need to go to a Walmart store? It's like, come on. You know, so it's funny. Shirley says, I want to be an Uber driver. That's funny. Um, so health, you know. We don't need to say on this long, but you know, there's a guy out there, you know, that does Vice, V I C E, and it's a TV program. I think it's on HBO. And man, the stuff that they're coming out with right now, figuring out about, they 1000% believe they got a cure to AIDS. Not a, um, not a medication. They have a vaccination and they can stop people. They had a guy on the show where they figured out by doing a transfusion of white blood cells from people that survived a bubonic plague in, in Europe, and they figured out the DNA sequence. And you can turn around and get that sequence in your blood, and you no longer have AIDS. You no longer have HIV. So they're doing, I forget how many tests they've done on him now, 
and his body does not have cancer in it anymore, and it does not have AIDS or HIV anymore. You know what I mean? It's like, do you guys really believe that we're going to see? Because now they're figuring out, which is funny, I don't want to get on a tangent because this is about disruptive business models, right? But listen to this. They now have figured out. Ta-da! Wait for this one. They finally figured out that if you can get the immune system strong in a human being, that it will eradicate what's in their body. <gasps> wow! Breaking news, everybody. <laughs> so now guess what? Now they're figuring out how to be able to boost that immune system, how to get that immune system to communicate right throughout the whole body. And guess what? Let the body do what the body was designed to do. Instead of dulling it, you know, putting painkillers in it, trying to kill the bad cells as you're killing the good cells. And I, I said I wouldn't get on that tangent, but hey, you know what? They're, they're coming out. So again, game changer, disruptive business model. And guess what? Can you imagine actually having a vaccine for cancer? Oh, it's like, what are all the pharmaceutical companies going to do? What are all the billion dollar companies going to do to sell us stuff that sort of keeps us alive? for a couple of months longer. All right, I said I wouldn't get on there, but I did anyway. So Airbnb, what has happened with communications as far as email? So we went from mail to email to text to chat to FaceTime, uh, Periscope, chat on the bottom of here. Uh, does anybody you know wanna go back to writing a letter? And see, a lot of people still find it. It's like, well, you know, I just think I got to do a letter. You know what? I, I understand the personality of a letter. I understand the personality of being face-to-face. -face. I do. I get it. But being face-to-face -face on a Periscope like this and being face-to-face -face with you on a Google Hangout, I'm telling you what, you can see my emotions when I tell you how proud I am, how much I love you, how much I know you can do this. And I know that if you stop fighting the disruptive business models, you can be successful, but you got to stop fighting them. You know what I mean? It's like, you got to start saying, what are the successful people doing? You guys heard me recently in the last a little bit where all of a sudden now I'm embracing the concept, concept of Periscope, YouTubes, uh, uh, blog posts. You know, I, it was funny. I was on a Periscope with Ty Tribble. You can see him on here. And, you know, he's been doing internet marketing for years. And I've known about all these guys and they've known about me. But now I'm connecting with them. You know what I mean? I, I love what they're doing for their communities. I love what they're doing for, for other people. And, and I'm, I love learning from them. So that's really, really cool. So we talked about government. You know what I mean? Think about the government. Do you guys realize without paying attention? Because a lot of people aren't. Do you realize how many governments have been overthrown because of Twitter? There's a whole, whole write up about it. So now, you don't have to go to the newspaper or listen to the radio or watch TV to get your information. If you would have told me, I, I'm, I'll always be straightforward with you because then I don't have to remember what I said. I still am learning Twitter. I don't, a hundred, a hundred, what, 110 characters, 124 characters, whatever it is. I don't get it. But when you see these people right now that are, um, overthrow Egypt and in all these places they're now coordinating you know now when they're doing riots in the United States and in Ferguson or or you know um, uh, some of the places Chicago right now they right now are 100% communicating via Twitter and the police officers and everybody can't find them quick enough fast enough you see what I mean? Because Twitter's out there. It's like, bleep, 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 bleep. everybody's on a Twitter deal. And we know where Facebook has stepped in with that. We know where Instagram and Snapchat has stepped into that. Now Periscope. You know what I mean? So, you know, these things are for real. And I would consider you trying to jump on the bang wagon instead of waiting to see. 
You know what I mean? Every one of you got to know that I started Periscope, you know, a couple months ago. I think this is like 115 show or something like that. And a million hearts. There was one time when I didn't have any hearts. There was one time when I didn't have a Periscope account. There was one time when I didn't have a YouTube account. There was one time when I had a didn't have a Facebook account. There was one time when I had a Facebook account with three friends. You know, now I got hundreds of thousands of friends, all right? So, and, and likes and everything like that, okay? So when you can move governments, you know what I mean, based on new technology, that's a new concept. Um, of course, shopping is one I wanted to finish up with is shopping. We already talked about what Amazon has done, uh, what Alibaba has done. You know what I mean? Uh, guilt.com. You know, recently I, I, this whole concept of social retail where people can actually shop and get a discount and get free shipping and also go out there and share with other people to get a discount off what they would buy anyway. See, that's the key that each and every one of you got to really, really get. If you can get in the consciousness, consciousness, the thought that you can get things that you need for you and your family for free. Did you hear that? You know, so Periscope's free. Twitter's free. Facebook's free. What if you could get everything for you and your family for free? Because when you look at guilt.com, you know, they were able to acquire 6 million, 6 million satisfied customers. And guess what they did? If you could go out and share and get somebody to get an account on guilt.com based off your referral code, then you got money off your next order. So women, you know, I know this has got a lot of stuff on there for guys, but imagine wanting to get a designer handbag or a nice pair of shoes or a nice blouse and get it shipped to yourself for free. So this new social, social retail model, I think is just hitting, but it's gonna get bigger. It's gonna get really, really bigger. And the last one that I wanted to bring up is affiliate marketing. See, people still don't get the concept of affiliate marketing. I want to do a whole separate Periscope on this. But the concept that you could go to Amazon.com and sign up as a free affiliate. You can go to Walmart.com. You can go to Linkshare.com. If you go to linkshare.com, and I'm sure there's other ones that Ty knows about, um, you know, to think that you can actually be an affiliate for a company and share a product or something with somebody and make enough money, not only to get your stuff for free, but actually make a full-time income. If you go on Google right now and put in top 10 income earners for YouTube, there's people that make millions of dollars a year putting videos up and unwrapping Disney toys and talking with their voice about unwrapping Disney toys, what's in the Disney toys, and, 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 and she makes millions of dollars a year by being a YouTube affiliate. You see what I mean? So you got to open up your mind to affiliate marketing. You got to really open your mind up to the ability that if you're going to build a network and you're going to be have uh, uh, um, you know uh, people that you're out there that you got to find a way to plug into these things. And I've known about it for years, and now I'm I, I'm embracing it. I know it was out there for a year, but the same with Alibaba and Amazon, all of a sudden going past Walmart is for real. I never, ever, ever thought that I could say to you guys, and if you look at right now the top 10 companies in the world based on what they're worth based on stock, and guess what? Facebook is there. Facebook is there. Twitter's there. Uh, um, um, Snapchat is there. You know, you're looking at these companies that are amazing. 
You know what I mean? So that's why I'm embracing affiliate marketing. To know that people can get involved and learn for it with no money. They can learn from that. And as they get plugged into that and learn affiliate marketing, learning how to, you know, build a rapport, build a following, build a group of people, offer value and content. And digital education, which is, you know, Phoenix Online. You know, you look at all these companies that make billions of dollars by education people, educating people online. And so that's where the life mechanic is about. The life mechanic is, I know that each and every one of you in closing this periscope is I seen a person that made a million dollars a year stand in front of a room 29 years ago and talked about cutting out the middleman. That one day that you'd be able to go directly to the manufacturer and take it directly to your home. I never heard him say, because that was 29 years ago, that UPS was going to bring it to you. Or that you didn't have to go anywhere. You just could click on an app and an app store for free and bingo. So the apps are going to continue to come. The concept is going to continue to come. Digital education, $7 trillion, is going to continue to grow. So as these disruptive models come into play, don't you think that you should learn to be on the cutting edge on them and capitalize on them instead of being in that mindset that it's always been done this way? One of the most dangerous statements on the planet. So you know what's going to happen. This is going to be a situation where you're not going to like it because it's going to change anyway. I don't know if you can buy a TV anymore without a remote control. I don't know if you can buy a pager. It's hard to find a pay telephone. <laughs> it's like things change and they don't go back. They change. They're disrupted. They're different forever. And you might not like it, but we're going to get you. They're going to get you. You can fight it all you want. And it's going to get you. So why not just be in the person where you fight and then it gets you? Why not be in a place where you're actually benefiting from it? You're actually helping people from it. You're actually being financially compensated for it. Why not? Can you, do you, do you want to go down in history as being always the last person that got it? But I know you're not those kind of people because if you're watching this video, you're either watching it on Periscope or you're watching it off a blog post. So you're following, you're getting it, but now you need to complete it. Right. And if you need my help, just check me out on lifemechanic.com. I'm pretty sure I went over a million hearts and I want to thank each and every one of you for it. So guess what? On this day, on this day, four years ago, on 12, 12, 12. Okay. On 12, 12, 12, December 12th, uh, 2012 is when I launched my book. And so. 12, 12, 15, over a million hearts. <laughs> so find a way to get a hold of me. You can go to lifemechanic.com. You can plug into Ask Me Anythings that I do six days a week. Uh, you can uh, look on my blogs, which is the replays of all the other ones to get your heart, your mind, uh, everything into play. Get it so you, the, the what I did yesterday on belief. Uh, everything in my power is there to help you. Get what you truly want for the rest of 2015. We only have a couple of weeks and definitely for 2016. So I look forward to helping each and every one of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Make sure that you're capitalizing and in front of the disruptive business models instead of having them always take advantage of you. Capitalize on the next ones. We'll show you how to do it. Take care. God bless. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.